there and welcome to you, Ranet Plus, you talking to me program. Today we're going to hear about two re-elected members of the European Parliament to talk about the new European Parliament's composition. And before we start, I'd like to introduce each of them. Mrs. Matthias, who is a member of the European United Left. Hello. Hello. And welcome back. Thank you. And Mrs. Reina Butikofer. Hello. You from the Greens. My pleasure. And welcome in our studio. <laughs> Thank you. It's the first time. Yeah. So um, before we start, so I'd like to have like a one uh, short uh, answer about the, your reaction also, Mrs. Matthias, maybe we will start with you, about uh, the overtake of the, because now at the results show, we see that the, the, the Grey York group, so they just overtake the Greens. So... The Greens are not our enemy, so I would be very glad if, if uh, the left and uh, all the groups who, which which uh, are in in I would say against this this hegemony, the logical hegemony that we have been assisting over the last years, would be growing all of them. Of course, I'm really glad that our group is is, is has increased a lot. But if the European United Left, I mean, overtake the Greens, so what does that mean? Would be what would be the impact of it? I, I would love that the, the European United Left would overtake uh, all the other groups because in times of austerity and in times of this type of policies is is important that people know who in fact are is more on their side in terms of the, the, the it's defending the workers' rights in terms of uh, environmental issues as well and social issues in, in justice and I think th this is the case that the countries we are, where we had mm, mm, the major growth were the countries which were more affected by austerity mm. so the grids may pass from the fourth position to the sixth position what do you react? What do you think about this, Mr. Bittico, for what well, will look, be the impact? Uh, of first it? of all, we haven't finalized the composition of the groups yet, so we should wait for the final result. But They have until the 24th of June. It's only one week, but... Yeah, but even taking that into account, I would really say this is a non-issue. I would be more concerned with the fact that we probably are going to have, as the number three group in the parliament now, the ECR, which is now integrating xenophobic forces, for instance, from Denmark. So that should be a we concern. We will come back on this, yes, we will come back on this. But first of all, I would like to make uh, just a comment about the German influence in the new European Parliament. As we see now, all the main groups are Chaired, will be chaired by Germans as uh, Mr. Weber for the EPP party, European People's Party, the winners group, and Rebecca Harms for the Greens, and so over. So what do you think about this German influence? Do we have too many Germans in the European Parliament, Mrs. Matthias? I, I think there are differences between the different groups in terms of ideology, so that th these are the most important differences. As uh, having Um, several presidents or shares of the groups which, who come from Germany. I would say that, um, in fact, it has probably to do with the fact that German, Germany elects more members of the parliament, so it, normally it has the biggest delegations in every, in every parliamentary group, some connection with it. But I'm, I'm much more concerned with the ideological uh, issues and divisions rather than with the nationality. I, I, I really don't think that's an issue. And, and yes, I do agree with my colleague that the main problem is uh, not only the, the, that the fact fact that ECR will become the three group, but mainly the, the rise of, of uh, the far right. Far right, yeah, we'll come back. So another comment, do you want to comment on what Mrs. Matthias just said? Look, being German, you're putting me in a difficult position. Should I apologize that we have 96 members elected from Germany? Should I... Uh, I think from a green perspective, if every group followed our model, there probably wouldn't be the discussion about uh, the dominant Germans because we've always had two co-presidents in our group. So we're not just having a German female co-president. We also have a Belgian male co-president. So maybe that Philippe could be Lambert, the solution yeah. and then nobody would 
talk about these distractions. Mm. So we will come back. No, because the main focus is, and you wanted to talk about this, the European Conservative Group, who just, I mean, managed to, to gain now 60, 64 members of the European Parliament to be the third group in the European Parliament. What is it? What does that mean, Mrs. Matthias? I think that we have to think about the causes of all this, and uh, the causes have to do with the uh, with the path that has been followed by the European Union institutions over the last years, and the Parliament included. And I think that uh, the the rise of uh, right wing far right wing forces in several countries has to do with the consequences of austerity policies. And we are, as I said several times before, uh, if we continue in this path of austerity and neoliberal policies, what we'll be doing is destroying the very EU project itself. Mm, but how will the coalition now be made, be organized now with this? Conservative Party, Mr. Butikofer. Well, the worst outcome that I could imagine would be kind of an Austrian solution, which means a grand coalition that uh, produces only standstill, no real reform, no move forward. And then you have all the populist vultures sitting on the sideline waiting for the corpses and the car carcasses. This is my best nightmare. And I think, indeed, there has been a um, wave of populist, anti-European polemics and rhetoric during the campaign, not only from the right, unfortunately, also on the extreme left. And we have to deal with that, certainly. We cannot deal with it by just supporting a kind of business-as-usual approach, uh, prolonging the policies that have failed. We have to go for change, but what we have to insist on and what we as Greens insist on, that we have to cooperate on a European level to effect change. Change cannot be brought about against Europe, can only be affected through European cooperation. And, oh, sorry, but yes. I, I just cannot agree with this, with this uh, comparison between Why? the far Could right and, the, the, and the, the radical left, because it's really offensive. We are talking about uh, political parties which are xenophobic, which are racist, racist, which in fact put nationality at the center of the issues, which don't take into account social justice only if it is for the nationals who live in their countries. So this is a very, very unfair comparison, but which has always a, been made. That's not a comparison the, I've made. No, but I have spoken said, about some voices on the far left, like the French Communist Party, they are just off the board. Mm. I'm I'm not talking no. about you, but that is what, what the, the citizens know. No. So, but, but the anti, I mean, the anti-Euro German party, AFD, just joined the ECR as well. So that's, that's is scary or not? That is scary. The uh, success of Marine Le Pen, uh, the success it's, of UKIP is scary. Uh, I think that there is a, a kind of funny interrelation between, on one hand, uh, um, pervasive technocratic approaches to real political yeah. democratic choices, and on the other hand, a kind of populist uh, rollback that is feeding into the technocracy and the technocracy is feeding into populism. And I think real democratic choices are what we have to put on the table to fight both of those negative tendencies. But what would the public, I mean, wants to know, it's all these policies, all the European policies, they will just slow down with all these Eurosceptic members because we can count that maybe around 70 members Ah, uh, no. I, no, so no, 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 I don't think so. And and unfortunately, I I, I call again to the the main cause of all of this. Uh, the, the main cause, which is austerity policies, which is really making a huge, huge gap between citizens and European institutions. I don't think, I, I think there will be a huge pressure for that the, the two biggest groups uh, continue to do what they normally do, which is to articulate themselves uh, for, I'm meaning EPP and, and S&D in order to try to have a majority and try to, to, to avoid 
negotiations with one, either one side or the other. But the problem is that I hope there's a, a huge shift in the in the trends of the policies because the problem is that these same policies are the ones which in fact are being assessed with these results. Mr. Well, Whitaker, you want to react? Yeah. Well, I do agree that we cannot build a European future on the basis of austerity. And I do and we do advocate a policy of investment as an alternative. But I don't think it's just justified to just blame everything that goes wrong in Europe on austerity. What went wrong in France cannot be blamed on austerity because there has not been austerity in France. So I think the, the problems are probably a bit more complex and we can only win against the forces of populism if we have an adequate analysis. But with the, with the French, with the 74 uh, members, including the 24, uh, I mean, initially from uh, Marine Le Pen, do you think France has a, will still have a big, big impact on the new EU policies for the next EU parliament? I think Mathias? that we should look carefully for, for what is happening in France. I think that some years ago, no one of us would think that uh, the Republican France would be facing uh, a kind of result like this. This is not new in France. This is unfortunately something that has been uh, appearing in the, in the several elections and it, it became now a consequence as we see that after three elections, finally the uh, Front National uh, got uh, the first place. This is really serious. It's serious because it is uh, against all, I think, what you th we think uh, are the, the common and the shared values that we have. And, um, and in a country like France, which is in fact the second most uh, influential it used to be, I don't know what it is going to be now. Uh, of course, it can have some impact, but I'm, I'm, I'm really concerned is about the, the major trends. And um, yes, Mr. Boutikofer, you want to add yes, something? I would say yes, indeed, uh, France is going to be represented by the people that the French voters elected, not by those who failed, obviously. But the major impact of that Uh, result in France will probably be in Paris and the major effect of the result of UKIP will probably be in London. So uh, that's also where we have to find ways as European parliamentarians that prefer democratic choices, that we find ways of cooperating with our colleagues in the national parliaments to oppose those populist Options. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but as you said, it was a result of the elections. It was not. It was not a natural disaster. It was a result of the elections, and yeah. Mm. So to to sum up, I mean, the, this debate uh, to finish, you've got uh, 30 seconds, Mr. Butikofer, to just make you your last wish before the. June 24, before we elected, I mean, all well, the president. Well, to put it in one sentence, I'm opposed to right wing populism, but I'm not afraid of it. And you, Mrs. Matthias? I, I'm, I'm afraid of what will be the, the options. I hope that uh, some le lessons were learned and the people are taken first instead of the markets. Thank you, both of you, for making this time to be with us. And thank you for joining us on Johannet Plus. See you. Okay.